Hello viewers, 4DIYers here, back with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you different methods on how to test your vehicle's fuses along with some tips. This includes using a test light, digital multimeter, and analog multimeter. Voltage and continuity tests will both be covered in this video. Fuses are used to protect a circuit. If a circuit is overloaded or there's a short, the conductor link inside the fuse will burn out immediately, switching off the circuit so there's minimal risk of damage. As an important tip, use good quality fuse replacements if you find one burnt out. I used a cheap fuse in the past to find the plastic case melted and bonded to the distribution box case. Fuse locations can vary between vehicles and they may be spread throughout a couple different areas of a vehicle. You can usually find this information in your owner's manual. Fuse boxes or also referred to as power distribution boxes can be located under a hood, under a dashboard, in the glove box, under the rear seat, in the trunk, or even under the floor carpet. On this Dodge Ram, the fuse location is found in the integrated power module instead, which is located under the hood in the engine bay. As you can see, here I have a test light. This only works when a power source is present, however it's fairly straightforward to use. Next is a digital multimeter. A fuse can be tested a couple different ways within a multimeter using both voltage and continuity. This will be shown in the video. And finally is an analog multimeter. Similar to the digital multimeter, this too can test both voltage and continuity. If you find a certain component isn't working in your vehicle, checking the fuse is the first place to start. All electronic components will be fused in your vehicle, such as a radio, lights, power windows, keyless entry, horn, fuel pump, air conditioning, etc. Fuse diagrams can be found in your owner's manual or on the fuse box cover. The diagrams will outline the fuse for each circuit along with the required amperage. On this Toyota, we have diagrams for the distribution box both in the engine bay and interior which I'll show in a moment. Removing the covers will vary. Typically there will be a tang that needs to be depressed, then pull up or pull off the cover. This distribution box has relays, however I won't be getting into that. In the cover, there will be spare fuses along with a removal tool. This can vary between vehicles too. As you can see, each will have different amperage ratings as shown by the number on top. This example is using the cover from the Dodge Ram. Required fuse ratings will be shown on the distribution box cover diagram or in the owner's manual. Larger amperage rated fuses will have a larger profile and this can't be tested in place as there's no exposed terminals on top. Whenever a fuse burns out and you're having a continuous problem on the same circuit, do not replace it with a higher amperage fuse. Circuits are designed to have a maximum amperage. A fuse is the weakest part of a circuit if a fault is present. If you replace it with a higher amperage rating, the circuit will find the next weakest link and this can result in damage such as a component burning out or overheating the wires where it causes a fire. Next is turning on the ignition to the run position but with the engine off. This will activate most electrical components. First using a test light. The ground clamp will need to be connected to a sufficient ground source. With the battery being so close, the negative terminal is a great source. A bare body bolt or bracket can also be used, something which connects to the main body of the vehicle. It's always good to verify the test light is working and you have a good ground source by touching the test light on a positive battery post or known power source. Next is going through each of the fuses touching the probe on the exposed test terminal on each fuse. There are two locations to test the fuse on each side of it. One will be the power coming in and the other is the power going out with the fusible link in the center. On a good fuse, the test light will work on both sides. If the test light only works on one side of that fuse, that means the fuse is burnt out and will need to be replaced. On the one side of the distribution box, there are circuits with no power present. This would mean that the circuit is off and needs to be activated. Referring over to the diagram on the cover, it lists the circuits for the vehicle's lighting, such as daytime running lights, low beam, high beam, etc. In order to power up these circuits, turn on the vehicle's exterior lights. Back to testing, there is now power present at each of the fuses, and we can see the fuses are good. As for the high beams, again, these two need to be activated. Moving on to the digital multimeter, set the multimeter to the two-digit DC voltage setting. Just like the test light, we need a sufficient ground source. Again, I'm using the negative terminal on the battery. Touch the positive probe on the positive post to ensure the meter is working correctly and we have a good ground source. 
I have kept the ignition on in the run position so most of the circuits are still powered up. Then continue to test each of the fuses on the test terminals. Moving over to the headlight circuit, again there is no voltage as the circuit is off. So it would need to be turned on again if you want to test those fuses here. For the analog meter, it's very similar to the digital version, however it doesn't require batteries to test for voltage. In this case, with the system being 12 volts, it'll need to be set to the 50 volt max setting as the 10 volt setting will max out on the needle swipe. Same as before, use a sufficient ground source and test the meter first, then continue to test each of the fuses with the vehicle's electrical system on. When power is present, you'll see the needle swipe and both sides of the fuse will have a reading if the fuse is good. If there's only power on one side of the fuse and not the other, the fuse is faulty. The first method I've shown here, the vehicle does need to have active circuits and a main power source being the battery. Moving on to the interior, this truck also has another distribution box in the driver's side knee panel which is accessed by removing a cover. Again, the cover does have a diagram on the back side labeling each circuit along with each fuse rating. The box isn't fully filled with fuses as this distribution box is most likely used in a variety of vehicles. There are extra spots for more features of the vehicle. Unused spots will either be labeled as unused or crossed out such as here. With the battery being so far away, this time we'll need a sufficient ground source. This can be a dashboard steel frame, a bolt, bracket, seatbelt bolt, etc. For this I'm using the main bolt which goes into the firewall and I'm starting out with the test light first. With the vehicle's key in the run position and the engine not started, the fuses can be tested and here you can get a closer look. Both sides of the fuses are tested. Power should be present on each side for a good fuse. If power is only present on one side, the fuse is faulty and will need to be replaced. A multimeter would be used in the same manner just like before. You'll need a ground source, then each of the fuses can be tested. A fuse can also be removed for testing and inspection. These are mini fuses, which are about half the size compared to the fuses that were used on older vehicles. These tend to be a little harder to remove, your vehicle may have a fuse removal tool which can be found in the lid of the distribution box or somewhere within close proximity. Grab onto the fuse, they may need to be wiggled out when removing. If you don't have a removal tool or are having problems with it, use pliers instead. Don't get too aggressive as you can break the outer shell of the fuses, they're only plastic. With the fuses removed, here you can see a close up. On the far right, this has a higher amperage. As they reach a certain rating, they'll become larger. This is rated at 50 amps. These can be inspected through a clear window on the top. They're removed in a similar way like the smaller spade fuses, but they do not have test terminals on the top. Next is the small 10 amp spade style fuse. This one is good. You can see the sides are clear to inspect the fusible link inside. Here are the test terminals on the top when testing the fuse in place. Finally is a burnt out 20 amp fuse. You should be able to see the dark mark inside the clear plastic housing along with a space between the fusible link. This may vary between fuses, sometimes you can feel the loose terminal within the plastic case. Now for a continuity test, this can only be done with the fuses removed. When a meter is set to a continuity setting, this puts a small amount of voltage to the circuit you're testing to check for resistance. You can risk damaging an electrical component when it's still installed in your vehicle, which is why it must be removed as a safety precaution. A test light can only be used if voltage is present, so this cannot be used here. I can use an analog multimeter, but it needs to have batteries for such a test, and I don't have any installed. So I'll be using the digital multimeter instead. However, the same process applies to the analog multimeter, the only difference is the gauge readout. There are two ways to do this, using resistance or the continuity function, I'll demonstrate both. First using resistance, set your multimeter to the lowest setting. Touch the probes together to ensure it's working. No value means we have an open circuit. When a reading is shown, that means we have a connection, so continuity or an uninterrupted connection. We have a reading of 0.06 ohms. There is a very small amount of resistance which may mean dirty test probes. Testing a good fuse, touch the probes on the spade terminals. Which probe connects to which connection doesn't matter. We do have a reading which would mean a good fuse. Just showing you from the top terminals, this would be the same test as you're using the same connections as they're part of the same conductor. 
And as you can see, we do have a registered reading again. Moving on to the larger good fuse, this can only be tested from the bottom terminals. Insert the test probes and watch for a reading. There is a slight or high rating here, which may mean I'm not making a good contact on the terminals. However, this doesn't matter as we're only looking for a closed circuit, which means a complete path for voltage to flow between two test probes within the fuse. As for testing the already known blown fuse, touch the test probes on the spade terminals. There is no reading. This means we have an open circuit, so the path of voltage to flow is broken or burnt out. Some meters have a continuity test feature. This is shown by a diode symbol. Some have an audible beep, and others do not, so you're only relying on the readout screen. At the moment, the screen shows one. This means an open circuit, as the probes do not have a connection between each other. Testing the good fuse, when a connection is made, will have a reading shown as a low value. Moving on to a larger fuse, again using the same process with the test probes. Again, we do have a value, meaning the fuse is good. Now moving on to the blown fuse, you can see there is no value registered, meaning an open circuit, therefore the fuse is no good and will require a replacement. New videos released every week on my channel, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, it's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.